if you're asking God for something big and it's beyond you, then you got to know you won't make it on your own knowledge, strength, or resources. So when God sends per certain people into your life, they have to come. Because if God is a good father and he's going to answer your prayer, he's going to send what you don't have. The definition of angel means what? Messenger, which means any one of you can be an angel if you allow God to send you. Say, hey, listen. I got this $30 that I don't know why I'm giving it to you. You ever, you ever heard stories like that? You ever heard, I don't know why I'm giving it. I really don't want to give it to you. But I just feel like something, is, just just take it. And they, and they walk off with an attitude. Just, just take it. I don't know. God just wanted me to, even your enemy, the devil was an angel to Jesus. He is an angel. Because God used him to save you. God used the devil to save you. And sometimes your enemy don't even know that they sent to you to bless you. We heard you were graduating. We heard you got a new car. We heard you got a new place. Hey, we heard you starting your own business. Hey, we heard you in a new relationship. Hey, we heard you out of one and you doing good. <laughs> Whenever you're doing something, whenever you're trying to build something, we heard that, hey, you're growing spiritually. Hey, we heard that you don't do those things no more. We heard that you're cleaning up your life. People hear stuff, don't they? Now, it doesn't mean they have all the, the facts, but you get Satan's attention whenever you're trying to what? Whenever you're trying to, you're trying to do something better, you're trying to clean up, Trying to get some new furniture? Are you painting? You redecorating your life? Oh, you got a new dude. Is that a new dress? And them new shoes? Okay. I, oh, you got new friends. Oh, oh, you making connections. Are you traveling now? Oh, you you got different resources. Whenever there's movement, people talk. Now, here, I need you to understand something. People don't talk if you ain't. So here's something that you have to understand as a Christian. Whenever you're making major moves, be prepared for people to what? For people to talk. If you get your feelings hurt, we only trying to do something good. Why people, why, why people saying this and why somebody said this and somebody said something? Be prepared for chatter. Now you can't stop the chatter. That's a waste of time. Don't stop the chatter. Just be what? Just be prepared for the chatter. You out there loving on people and being kind and waving. You out there giving drinks of water and you giving meat to the home. And you sit there. Whenever you start serving. Now, discouragement is going to come so you can quit what you're doing. Somebody says, I want to be a millionaire. I'm going to be a, a, a billionaire. All right. Okay. 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 Everybody got dreams. But taxes come with it. I don't want to deal with no taxes. I just want to ball out and... Hey, listen, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Taxes. They call him your uncle. <laughs> uncle Sam. Do you, do you know why taxes show up in everybody's house? Because he's everybody's uncle. <laughs> he, could, he go to every family reunion. He walk in any house. He know everybody. You know why he know everybody? Because he's your... Don't look at the color. He's your uncle. <laughs> he's your uncle. And so, there are certain things that you can't separate. So, one thing that I realized in ministry, serving God is a wonderful feeling. It's an awesome feeling. So beautiful. But there are taxes that come with it. Can we be clear? Everybody's not happy about what you're doing. Everybody's not excited that you are seeing success. 
sometimes you working so hard and you you taking so many blows that they don't even realize that the people that are envious of you don't even realize that you're beat up and they're trying to tear you down not realizing you ain't paying no attention to them you just trying to make it they don't even realize that you just trying to make it and they are across the street jealous of your struggle I'm struggling just finished crying and you're jealous of my pain be very careful of people who point out your flaws only to get you to stop making progress. Well, you know, you spend all that time doing all that, but you know, you know, you need to spend some more time with your children. You're not, you're not saying that because you care about my children. You ain't, you ain't gave one gift, spent no time, ain't hugged not one of them, but now you concerned about parenthood? Well, you know what? You, uh, and sometimes they'll use the Lord. Well, you need to, you, you know, you, you need to be more into the word of God. You need to, you need to, hey, you need to take a break. All of a sudden you concerned about my health? Or you want me to rest? You know you're doing too much. You're just doing too much. Sometimes when you tell people what you're doing, you exhaust them, but you're the one doing it. <laughs> so they want you to take a break so they can go to sleep. Yeah. And you know what that's an indication of? Stop telling all your business. Yeah. And everything that you're doing. Everybody don't need to hear your schedule of your whole day and all the stuff that you got going on. And they don't, know, they don't need to know all your projects because everybody doesn't care about what you're doing and they're not there to support. So sometimes what they'll do is they'll start to mock and make fun of what you're doing. And they'll sometimes come in the spirit of I care about you when they really don't. Ain't it funny when people, they discourage you with questions? So you're going to do all that study and you're going to stay up all night and you're going to write all them papers and you're going to do it. You're going to take all that. You're going to take all them courses and you're going to spend all that money. You know, that's a lot of money. Is that a question or are you making a statement? Because I'm ready to walk away. I'm just trying to figure out, do you have any more real questions? All of these are rhetorical. And you're just talking to yourself. Because I've already counted the, I've already counted the cost. So I, I, I told you what I was doing. But I wasn't looking for an advisor. You really gonna sacrifice? I mean, you, you really w willing to put the work in? And you gonna sacrifice? You really gonna give your time, your energy, your resources to this? <laughs> for real, you really gonna, <laughs> you think they really gonna do all of this? What y'all think y'all doing? You're a woman, you're a man. You're a sorry man. You ain't that smart. What kind of grades you got in school and you trying to be a what? So this is what you trying to achieve? Have you ever done this before? Hey, guess what? Just because I ain't never done it before don't mean I can't. I mean, I can't do it. So you really trying to start all over? Are you trying to have a new life? You living your best life? You trying to do it right now? Is this is what you trying to do? Hmm, interesting. You know you just like your mama though. You know you just like your daddy. You know you're gonna be right back here. We'll give you a little time, but you know you're gonna be right back here doing the same thing. I don't even know why you quit that job. I don't even know why you're trying to make a career change. You know you don't even understand the word of God. You know, hey listen, you know you're just gonna keep sinning. You know, it, you know that ain't nobody ever just Everybody fall. You know you're going to keep falling. It's the questions that's discouraging you. Sometimes you need to change the channel to the people you're talking to. Sometimes the people that you care about are not your support system. They're just the ones you love. And everybody that you love doesn't necessarily qualify to be a part of your support system. 
Sometimes you want people that you love to rejoice with you. Sometimes it's just meant to love them and find another group of cheerleaders. Yeah. And sometimes the, the cheerleaders that, that's, that's uh, uh, on, the, on the floor, sometimes the cheerleaders on the floor have lost energy. So sometimes what the players do, they'll go to the stands and say, because the chili, they tired. All that flipping in it, they tired. So sometimes to get the support that you need, sometimes you got to go way up in the, at the top and find people to be your support. Sometimes you, sometimes you need to wake up and realize I got the wrong people that I'm leaning on. And I need to find another group because I don't need to hear the negativity. I don't need to hear the questions. I don't need somebody telling me I need to stop. I need somebody to tell me to keep going. What, to sit down and rest with you and chill on the couch with you and do nothing? Is that what you inviting me to do? He says, next question. Will they make an end of the day? Y'all gonna finish this by the end of the day? That's what that phrase mean. You really think you gonna finish? <laughs> Cause you always, you know you always start something. You know you don't finish. Hanging out with you, that's probably why. I need, so, so, so maybe I need to be around some finishers. Will they revive the stones out of the heaps of the rubbish which are burned? You really think you gonna take this like it is and make it better? That's what the last question is. You really think you're going to make this better? How are you going to make this better? How are you going to do that? You, you can't do that. It's so easy to get discouraged. So easy to quit. If there's anything significant that you're going to accomplish in life, you got to deal with criticism. But there is a voice that you really need to pay attention to. Can I tell you what that voice is? It's the one in your head. Sometimes, do you know why coming to corporate Bible study is good? Because sometimes it's good to hear different voices throughout the day. Positive voices, hopefully. If you're on the, if you're on the right aisle, right, <laughs> white, right. sometimes you're on the wrong row. <laughs> But if you're, if, you're on the, if you're on the right, if you're on the right road, sometimes it's good to be amongst other believers. I like being around believers because sometimes you're around pessimists. Sometimes you're around discouragers. If I got to be outside, you know what I don't need to hear from you? It's hot out here. I just, oh, I'm just, I'm thirsty. Hearing your voice makes me thirsty. And I wasn't even really that thirsty until I heard your voice. Sometimes that's difficult. Being around people who are not believers. You got to believe it's going to get better. I believe I can make it. I'm not going to let this defeat me. I'm not talking about self-help. I'm talking about scripture. God, who's blessed me, has given me what I needed to achieve. I won't let Satan win. He tore your life up. Planted seeds and all that kind of stuff in your life that just choked almost the life out of you, but you survived. Now cut the weeds out of your neck and stand up and fight back and don't let him win. You can be an overcomer. And all the things that you dreamed, it really ain't that far away. You just can't quit. Few people were talking and something else happened and that was another incident. Another, hey, take a break, sit down, take a nap, but don't quit. Who in here need a nap? You need a nap? Anybody need Take a nap. <laughs> Go take a nap, but don't what? Don't quit. 
Don't quit on the destiny that God has given you. Don't quit on what God placed in you and you dream about it and you talk about it. You're excited about it, but you got around the wrong people and they discouraged you. And yes, you did have to face this and this happened and everybody didn't support. They didn't show up. They were supposed to be in the audience. They were supposed to be in the crowd. They said that they would come through for you and they never show. They overslept or, or they reneged on their promise and they, they did not fulfill that role that was supposed to be. But don't quit. Don't quit. And sometimes the church doesn't make the impact in the community because all the people get together and they're really, really excited, not realizing there is a Judas, a Thomas, and a Sam Ballot in the audience. And if you don't run into Sam Ballot, you run into a Judas. Have you ever been betrayed in the church? It make you want to quit. You open up and you share something with some, and they betray you. It was just Judas. God will handle Judas, or sometimes Judas will handle himself. <laughs> and then you run into a Thomas. Thomas don't show up, but he want to have a say-so on what's going on. You missed the last service, but then you want to come up and say, well, I ain't going to believe until. Hey, listen, we need believers in the room. Now you got Jesus showing up eight days later trying to prove to you specifically that he is who he say he is. Jesus was supposed to share some other information. He sent me a teaching last week's lesson because you didn't show up. How would you feel if next Wednesday I taught this exact same lesson because there was one person that didn't show up last week and so they here, so I'm going to start off. You would be like, hey, but we need to, we need to move on. <laughs> because doubters delay progress. And sand ballots actually want to derail the whole project. A Judas, Judas is just trying to look out for themselves. Thomas is the one that you end up spending all your energy on trying to get on board. And it's just delaying the progress. But sand ballot, sand ballot is different. Sam Ballas says, I want this to fail. I want this to completely fail. And you know what I'm going to do? I'm going I'm to go get an audience and I'm going to go find people that will agree with me to make fun of you and hopefully influence you by the majority. Even though what you're doing is great. He's, the Bible is telling you what? Beware. Be very careful. Because, notice this, the word of God is powerful. But sitting next to the wrong man will spoil you to the point where the word of God has no more effect on your life. So you know what the Bible is telling you? Even though the word of God is powerful, be careful who you sit next to. Because the person that you sit next to and has access to your ears can actually disannul the word of God that's running through you and giving you the power and the energy to do what you need to do. Because another person is actually another word, which is why I'm supposed to spend more time in the word of God than I am listening to your word. So you can quote to me what somebody else says, but you can't quote scripture. Somebody says, well, I'm not good at quoting scripture, but you're good at quoting people. So what God says, be very careful of the people you listen to and you're, you're memorizing their words, but you can't remember, memorize the word of God. They will spoil you and they will damage your dreams and damage your destiny. He says this through philosophy and what? Vain means empty. Deceit means trickery. Some people will deceive you and the prize is empty. Why are you messing with me? Some, some people, they just get a kick out of tricking. You know people who play pranks? What's, what's the prize? A laugh? 
I read the word of God, but I also have a personal relationship with Christ. Did you hear what I just said? I read the word of God, but I, not but and I have a personal relationship with God. So there are some things that God can do with me that you can't read about because I pray to him and I have a personal and I ask God with the Holy Spirit in my life to lead me so you won't be able to track my every moves by book, chapter, and verse because he's doing something personal with me along with the word of God. Now, the Holy Spirit will never cause me to contradict the word of God. They actually work and they go together. He says this, you're being spoiled because you allowed other people, other things, traditions and philosophy and all this stuff to spoil you. And you listen to Oprah when Christ was trying to say, no, nah, this is the and you were following the wrong thing. You got some good philosophy and advice by somebody that was respected in the rudiments, the things of the world. And you didn't quiet the noise and say, God, this is what I'm praying for because Mark 11 says, if you believe, those things can come to pass if you believe what you say and you have faith, God will lead you to that destination. But as God was leading you, you started, inter you started accepting other directions from other sources and it drowned out the GPS of the Lord. And you wonder why you're at a different destination with a different emotional response and you're drained when it is Jesus Christ that fills our cup. Now why in the world if you're drained, if I fill your cup?